everyone and welcome. Thanks for joining us and for those of you who listen to the recording afterwards. Um, my name is Helen and I lead Transformational Retreats for Women. I've been on the Goddess Path for over 25 years. And um, today we are going to be sitting in Sacred Circle through the ethers. Um, to honor the Magdalena, women in praise of the Magdalena, <clears throat> Mary Magdalene. We know uh, her reputation has been conflated over the millennia, two millennia, and it wasn't until 2016 that um, the current Pope actually venerated her. So it's taken a while, but we are here on July 22nd, which is officially Mary Magdalene's feast day. So celebrating her as the apostle to the apostles. And although she was not respected for her inner knowing, She was not respected or venerated for her inner knowing as the Apostle to the Apostles. We are celebrating her today and honoring her legacy. And for those of us who were, not myself included, but maybe you were raised Catholic, I'm not sure, um, we can use the chat. Um, to share, but um, if you were raised Catholic, and I have a few friends that were raised Catholic, and they were taught to fear Mary Magdalene and not be like her, um, as, as her reputation, you know, has been had been slurred um, since 591 by Pope Gregory, saying that she was a prostitute. So, if that's your, if that's the case with you, I'd love for you to share in the in the chat if you've had that experience growing up. I know I have three or four of my good friends who are raised Catholic and who are told, "Oh, you don't want to be like Mary Magdalene." But of course, you know, reading more into uh, Mary Magdalene's um, manuscript, um, which I, I'm going to recommend some books for those of you who would like to read a little bit more about Mary Magdalene. Um, and also her gospel, she had an inner knowing. Um, it is pretty much certain that Mary Magdalene and Jesus were an item, were a couple, were married. So he shared information with her that the other cycles um, were not privy to. But also, because she was the living, breathing love in her heart, she was able to to open herself up to the teachings, the teachings of love. So I did lead a, re a retreat on Mary Magdalene a few years ago. I'm in Southern California, and um, we um, we really discovered a lot and delved into her history. So, what I'd like to do first is um, light a candle, honor our space together. If you have a candle, please light it now. I'm going to light one for us. And then I'm going to lead you through a meditation. And we'll do an invocation together. So you certainly can keep your camera off and then we can recite it. We'll do a little singing and then a little journaling. I know there's a lot of uh, events going on today in honor of Mary Magdalene, and I so appreciate you being with me today. I'm going to light the candle.
So if you can get yourself comfortable, we'll be in meditation for about 10 minutes. So setting yourself up, feet firmly planted on the ground, back supported, eyes closed. If you are um, wanting to feel grounded today, palms face down, or in receiving mode, palms face up. So we're going to take the breath up the spine and pausing at each of the chakra points, starting with the root chakra, lengthening your breath, filling the belly, bringing it up into your chest, and then exhale with a sigh. Ah. Do this two more times, expanding the belly, bringing the breath up to the chest, to the heart space, and then exhale with an awe, a sigh, letting go of the morning, your expectations of the day so that you can be fully present. up the spine starting with the root chakra and the sexual chakra solar plexus chakra. Visualizing the energy traveling up through the chakras to the crown chakra and then down again, washing through each chakra. Now I want you to imagine Two serpents, Luna and Solar, feminine and masculine, starting with the root chakra. And as the two serpents cross from left to right, right to left, they're igniting each of the chakras all the way up, bursting into a lotus flower at each of the chakra points until we come to the top of the head, two serpent heads. Down again, washing through, connecting, exploding each of the chakra points. to do this a few more times, just sending that energy, imagining two serpents crossing, Luna, the solar, the gold, the black. And as you do this, I just want you to imagine what they were talking about seven deadly sins in Mary Magdalene's story in a way that they can't
conflated her legacy. We do know from more research that these seven deadly sins were in fact the chakras. If you consider the history and time, the connection to ancient Egypt, Mary needed to have a clear channel, as did Jesus. So to turn the sacred chakras into deadly sins was a way to conflate her. So as we know now, if we are blocked in any of our chakras, we are not open to receive the divine love. We're feeling those chakra points again, just bursting open with clarity, love, joy, freedom. As we connect in this circle around the world, think of all the other women that are connecting today on this Mary Magdalene Feast Day. All the outpouring of love for the Divine Feminine, for the heart seat that is ignited in each women and men around our circle, circles in your town or village, circles in your county, in your district. The circles in your state, your country, your part of the world. Just expand that circle out. So we create the power of love. And let's call upon the energy of Mary Magdalene to be present with us now. Imagine her sitting in front of you as your breath flows in. Imagine a pink light infusing your energy field. Feel her divine love and compassion for you. see and feel that pink light flowing into your heart chakra. Feel it unfolding and opening in, a, in her gentle, loving kindness. Know you are safe. What wisdom does she have for you? I imagine any visions or insights or knowledge that comes to your third eye, into your consciousness, into your heart. closed. Holy Mary Magdalene, you who 
whose truth has been battered and bruised throughout the centuries. Help me to endure the trials in my own life with courage and dignity. You who have loved Jesus so much that you watched his dying breath, teach me to love truly. You who were pure of heart, cleanse my own wayward way of pride, arrogance, bitterness, and hard-heartedness. Just breathing that in. Feeling the presence of Mary Magdalene within you. What would you say to her? Write down. Hold those thoughts. You can journal afterwards. Breathing that delicious meditation to connect with Mary Magdalene. We're going to now recite an invocation. When you're ready. Coming back to the room. This will be a call and response. <clears throat> Mary Magdalene, to you we sing, wide is your womb, warm is your wing. Mary Magdalene, to you we sing, wide is your womb, warm is your wing. In you we live, move, and are fed, sweet flowing milk, life giving bread. In you we live, move and are fed, sweet flowing milk, life giving bread. Mary Magdalene, to you we bring all broken hearts, all broken wings. Mary Magdalene, to you we bring all broken hearts, all broken wings. Magdalena, Magdalena, Magdalena Maria. Magdalena, Magdalena, Magdalena Sophia. Magdalena, Magdalena, Magdalena Shakina. Magdalena, Magdalena. Magdalena, Maria, Sophia, Shakina, and so it is. So I'd love if you've just joined us just to share if this is the first time learning about Mary Magdalene or whether you have 
had your own story with her. Maybe you were raised in a dogma that told you Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. I'd love to um, start a conversation in the chat for those of you who just joined. And of course, when you're listening to the recording, we can still converse about this um, in, on, over on Facebook. But I wanted to um, just share with you a little bit about the history of Mary Magdalene, how it came that she was conflated as a prostitute, what were the seven deadly sins. Um, we had our meditation to open up. Um, so sorry if you missed that, that this is recorded. So certainly um, <clears throat> you can listen to it again. Um, so I'm just reading the chat. Let's see. <clears throat> hmm. Never really had much of an experience with Mary Magdalene's raised in an atheist household, so she has never been part of my life in that way. Yeah, me too. I wasn't raised um, in any particular religion either, but I certainly had friends who um, were raised Catholic and they shared with me the, the fear stories that their parents said or their teachers said, um, oh, we don't want to be like Mary Magdalene. So it's always this dark cloud of Mary Magdalene. So with all those years of, of being told, of the, I mean, two millennia, right? We know um, that her story based on Pope Gregory V in 591, um, that conflated her as a, a prostitute and that she had seven deadly sins. But we now know from research and um, the seven deadly sins were her chakras. Her chakras needed to be opened. So we talked about that in the meditation. So both Mary Magdalene and Jesus both had to have their chakras cleared and opened in order to receive the message of love and for her to be open and not have any ego so that she could spread the love. And the other apostles, of course, weren't open and uh, ready to receive the true message of Christ, which is that of love. They had egos involved, but Mary Magdalene was a true condu conduit. And there was a lot of jealousy with the other disciples, especially Peter. He couldn't believe that Jesus would share his message with her, being that she was a woman. So I would like to just share a little bit um, about the, partic the particular um, chakras. So if, we, if we've done, I don't know if you've done any work with chakras, but there is also the shadow side of each chakra, right? So if you if we think about the the root chakra, that's a lot of ego in there. But you need it for foundation. But if it's not cleared, you will have a lot of ego. But let me just um, I'm just looking at my notes. I'm taking this was a very last minute decision to do this today. Um, I did a retreat on Mary Magdalene and I found all my notes. Of course, it was a three-day retreat, but there's so much gold in in what we did over three days. I'm trying to con condense it down. But if you, if you think about the language that was used in the Bible and that has been carried over the millennia and how things have changed, I mean, we're experiencing this in our world today with historical facts, things that have changed through patriarchy, through um, squelching the power of, of women, minorities. But let me just share this um, chakra opening and how they relate to the seven deadly sins. I find this just fascinating. So the root cause of all evil in our chakra system is can definitely be found in our childhood conditions, right? Our shadow in our root chakra, where it spreads to the other chakras. So our meditation 
I talked about the two serpents crossing, the lunar and the solar crossing of the two serpents up the spine through the chakras and then down again. It's a very powerful meditation that I've been doing. Um, and you can find that. I'm going to send out some resources um, so that you can look at it yourself. But if you think about the root chakra, it's the conditionings, conditioning our influences about, about fear and anxiety and doubts. And uh, I mean, we've been experiencing a lot of this during the pandemic, not wanting to leave home. I mean, this all of this stuff needs to be clear and opened in order to fully fulfill our lives. And each chakra we know is, has, has a positive and negative trait. So what about the demons of the chakras? The demons are the emotions that keep us bound to suffering. And suffering struggles and negative experience also refer back to the ego. And the ego wants us to keep us where we are, not, not where God is goddess or spirit is and the more we become aware of the influence of our ego in each chakra it and you know it infuses out into our life so the easy it is to release the imprint but in order to do that you have to go back to the root so the root is possessed by the demon of fear so fear is not having enough fear of survival fear of instability fear of lack fear of the unknown addressing shadow family issues um, so we want to keep that clear first through moving the energy and then this the sacral chakra it's possessed by the demon of guilt so guilt from pleasure guilt from our emotions guilt of eating guilt of joy guilt of sensuality I mean I can go on right we've all experienced this maybe some of us more than others and the solar plexus chakra, it's the demon of shame, being ashamed of ourselves, afraid to step out into the light, um, of ashamed of our brilliant ideas, who, who are we to shine, our willpower and our strength. The heart chakra is possessed by grief, so it's, it's not about it, it's about not addressing this grief chakra or staying there stuck. The throat is possessed by lies, the lies we tell ourselves. The third eye chakra, delusion. And then the crown is possessed with attachment. So these are the main demons of each chakra. And of course, since we're humans, we're extremely complex. But these, there are many smaller demons alongside the main ones. But we can look at the, the main main demons and the more we're able to see the hybrids of each other then we can see how they play in our lives and how Mary Magdalene and Jesus work together they both had to go through this in order to be fully present so that's why I opened up with that meditation first so we can receive Mary Magdalene's true divinity and love so um, let me see if anybody's got any questions. Yeah, no. So I'm not an expert in the Rose um, legacy. What I like to look at Mary Magdalene is that she was a feminine mystic and that her story was um, denigrated and as a woman, and I know that some of you here today, certainly listening on the recording, work with the goddess and um, women who, whose reputation has, has not been brought out to the open. There's plenty of women that were artists, poets, storytellers, and their stories have been hidden. And that is my particular interest in my line of work, um, seeing how the feminine mystics and the goddesses, the archetypes, how they can help us as modern day women. So for me, Mary Magdalene's story is really about leading with love and her message of love and an open heart. She didn't ask to lead, she just led. If you think about the time, 
She was the only woman amongst the other disciples. But she knew. She was open. She didn't ask permission. To me, that is her big message is not asking for permission. She just led. We know she was mentioned in the Bible 12 times. We know that she wrote her own manuscript, her own gospel that was discovered. Fragments of it at least. It was only in 2016 that Pope Francis issued a decree restoring her feast day today, proclaiming that Magdalene was an example for all Christians. And in May of 2017, after retelling the story of Gospel of John and Mary's role in bringing the resurrection message to her brothers, the, I think this is fascinating, the Pope addressed the General Assembly with these words about the Apostle to the Apostles, as she's known. Mary, the revolution of her life, the revolution destined to transform the existence of every man and woman, begins with a name that echoes in the garden of the empty tomb. How beautiful to think that the first appearance of the Risen One took place in such a personal way, that there is someone who knows us, who sees our suffering and disillusion, who is moved by us <clears throat> and who calls us by name. So that woman who is the first to encounter Jesus now has become an apostle of the new and greatest hope. <clears throat> and of course, if anybody's seen the Da Vinci Code, fascinating if you haven't seen it, um, that the sacred feminine is the story too of Mary Magdalene. And I'd like to end with a poem from a good friend, knew it more, and then we'll just end with a little journal prompt. I just checked the time. So, my path as a Magdalene is the path of a heart on holy fire, a chalice well of womb whisperings, the grail deeply steeped in scarlet flowing, gnosis knowing, the roses of my altar radiantly aflame, burning to ash any shame, and birthing a balm of healing bliss with my honey hive of wilderness. The glory gates of my temple, both the below and the above, as above, so below. A winding into the abyss, illuminated with the glow and the blessing of bliss, of the ebb and the flow, and of the holy kiss of the sacred marriage both within and without, the inner and the out, my Shiva Shakti, my Shakti and my Bhakti, my Isis and my Arisis, my Radha and my Krishna, my Magda and my Yeshua, the two as one, the moon and the sun, the yin and the yang, the saint and the sin, and in all begins within. My path as a Magdalena is a path of the heart on holy fire, a chalice well of womb rememberings, 
the grail deeply steeped in scarlet flowing, gnosis knowing, the roses of my altar radiantly aflame, burning to ash any shame and birthing a balm of healing bliss and in my honey hide wilderness. That's by knew it more. So if you've got a pen and paper and you've got your journal, we can do a quick um, quick exercise. Yes. Do we know much about her gospel? Mm. Yes, um, you can buy it. Um, but there are fragments of it, but it was the conversations between Jesus when he was talking to Mary Magdalene. Um, but because it's fragmented, it's a little hard to join it together, but you certainly can get you can get a message um, that she talks about the inner knowing, the inner dwelling, the um, open heart, um, excluding external forces, ego, fear. I mean, that's what her gospel is all about. Um, I don't have it here with me right now, but I will definitely include it um, in the email. And this is um, the Magdalene Manuscript, and this is something that I recommend as well, that I'll put in the, um, in the email when I send out the recording. But based on the little bit of information that you've found or discovered today, um, the journal prompt is, how do we become Magdalenas? and honor her true history, considering that her image is being battered and bruised through the centuries. But she really endures a, a figure of courage and truth-telling, right? The fact that she led the other disciples. She's invite, to me, she's inviting us to stand with her. So how might you honor the truth of her considering her history throughout the ages, conflated as a prostitute in order to keep her small, how might we honor the truth of what we've discovered today in history? How might you consider speaking up when you hear Mary Magdalene described as a penitent prostitute or whore or simply passed over in the Easter story? Um, I'll tell you a just real quick funny story. Um, I remember when I was doing, gathering my research for my Mayor and Magdalene retreat, which I did, I think it's about 2015. I interviewed a, um, a priest, a woman priest, I don't know if she's called priestess, but um, who ran a Catholic uh, church and interviewed her at length about Mary Magdalene and she just wasn't having it that she was the apostle to the apostles and um, but I didn't let it deter me and actually um, I've since then I've been in conversation with her and, and she re she reached out to me and said that it really, my research had really helped her look at the Easter story um, in a different way. Yeah. And my hairdresser, I remember, who is very Christian, I remember telling her that I was doing a retreat on Mary Magdalene, and she said, well, of course, you know she was a prostitute. Right. Well, it wasn't until 2016 that Pope Francis has declared her feast day. So it's time to get jiggy with it in the in the Catholic school. Yeah. So 
things do change. It only takes over 2,000 years, but things slowly change. And as modern day women who are interested in the goddesses and the feminine mystics and their message that wasn't, I mean, when you think about the time when women weren't appreciated, weren't respected, but they still went ahead and, and shared their story. Look at Hildegard von Bingen. So many feminine mystics like Mary Magdalene stories, um, we're still discovering them. And what can we learn from today? How can we learn as modern day women from Mary Magdalene's message that love is the truest, most purest, devotional way of living? So Mary Magdalene's feast day, July 22nd. La this time last year I was at the Roslyn Chapel, just outside of Edinburgh, celebrating and singing in the um, sacristy downstairs. Just started singing, there was another group of other women who started singing, we were doing vocal toning. It was the most magical, unfolding, spontaneous, um, 30 minutes I experienced on this magical day of Mary Magdalene. So I want to thanks, thank you for joining. I know this is very last minute. I had a few people join and then they had to go. But a lot of people are um, going to be receiving their recording. So what is one thing that you can take away from today? To me it's it's remember the love in my heart. Keep my heart open. Keep my heart open. And flowing with love. Hmm. To research Mary life and not to try and let the abortion of the Bible deter me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the Mary Magdalene manuscript with meditations. And if you, you know, if you think about the, sh the seven deadly sins, it's just the chakras. I mean, it's, you know, the language that they used. They didn't know what they were doing. I mean, they knew what Mary Magdalene and Jesus knew what they were doing because they were opening the chakras. But then it gets, you know, the language changes and it's denigrated as the seven deadly sins. So thanks for joining. I'm going to send out the recording so you can see it in its entirety and um, enjoy the rest of the day. Some of, I know you're in the evening, but um, maybe you can just sit in silence and, and light a candle for Mary Magdalene and sing a song. I also have a playlist I'm gonna send that to so you can listen and dance in honor of Mary Magdalene.